Camp Sovereignty. This morning we welcome members of your Australian Parliament here to our sacred fire, to our ancient law. Just over there is the resting place of 37 skeletal remains of First Peoples returned from the Victorian Museum and other government institutions. And so we welcome the seven committee members and the 58 participating members of this legislation committee of the Senate of the Australian Parliament. See the attached list at page four from the Australian Parliament House website. We now invite the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court to Camp Sovereignty to bring an investigative team from the Office of the Prosecutor to come to Camp Sovereignty urgently under Article 17 of the Statute of the International Criminal Court which is Schedule 1 to the International Criminal Court Act 2002 of the Australian Parliament on the Federal Register of Legislation online as a reference. Australia is demonstrably unable and unwilling to investigate and prosecute the crime of genocide against us, Australian people. And so, under Article 17, the International Criminal Court now has jurisdiction to investigate and prosecute Australia for the crime of genocide. Under Article 25, complicity in genocide is genocide. Article 27 states that, quote, official capacity as a member of parliament shall in no case exempt a person from criminal responsibility, nor shall it constitute a ground for reduction of sentence, unquote. Question, can senators who have not attempted to remove section 268.121 be charged with genocide in the International Criminal Court? The purpose of the International Criminal Court is, quote, to put an end to impunity for the perpetrators of these crimes and thus to contribute to the prevention of such crimes. That's the preamble of the uh, statute. Under Article 5, genocide is a crime within the court's jurisdiction and defined as killing members of the group, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about physical destruction forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. Every one of these acts has been committed against us since the English war of military invasion began against us. Each of these acts has continued to be committed against us in every generation since the invasion started. The motive was to steal our lands, waters and skies. The intent was to usurp our law. This multi-generational genocide has continued from 2002 until today and will continue tomorrow and into the future. There has been no treaty since 2002. There has been no official declaration of the end of hostilities since 2002. No one has ever been prosecuted since 2002. Article 30 states that intention in relation to conduct means to engage in the conduct and in relation to a consequence means to cause that consequence or be aware it will occur in the ordinary course of events. And knowledge means an awareness that a circumstance exists or a consequence will occur, consequence will occur in the ordinary course of events. Parliamentarians intended to make section 268.121 part of your law. Parliamentarians intended not to remove it from your law. Parliamentarians intended not to recognise our sovereignty. Parliamentarians intended not to seek our consent under a treaty. Question. Will the International Criminal Court convict you of complicity in our genocide? Article 77 penalties include imprisonment for life. Article 53 requires an investigation by the International Criminal Court because, quote, there is a reasonable basis to believe that a crime within the jurisdiction of the court has been or is being committed, unquote and, quote, taking into account the gravity of the crime and the interests of victims, there are, quote, no reasons to believe that an investigation could not serve the interests of justice. 30th of July 2004, Uncle Robin Court, Camp Sovereignty, CrimeScenesTradia.com. Attachment, email on Friday 26th July at 12.22pm of Camp Sovereignty Submissions Committee and page. Part of the, uh, but to me, it says... Australia's unwilling and unable. It's basically a, an apparatus. I don't think this exists anywhere else in the world. I think Australia's the only place in the world where that exists in terms of international law. Uh, they have this thing called a fiat, which is a 
basic a, a means to prevent people like ourselves from accessing these courts. So um, it's a, it indicates it's a barrier, blocking means uh, not answering. Why do they need that before? For any of them. It's very clear. It's so obviously clear why they want to protect their, their style and wealth and their interests. So do you think that the AGs I think it uh, makes total mockery of the law when you've got an individual who's able to uh, stand in the way of this universal law. You know, where it's meant to be uh, accessible. So to have a fear, you know, it says something's wrong with this country's law. They're unable and they're unwilling to deal with this issue. They need to have a fear, um, an individual standing in the way. It's, it's another barrier, it's another means of blocking our people. It's, it's nothing new, but uh, we're determined to go to the international court, whatever it takes. And, and I think if, if, if it's looked at properly, uh, there's no way that can stand up in international law as well. And I think that's, this issue is going to come to the fore in the, in the, in the coming months. Now is it possible? I don't know what the situation is in um, Palestine. Do they have a, a, an attorney general or someone blocking them from accessing these courts? So, you know, how is it fair? How is it, how is it fair at all that they, we've got this individual, a colonizer to this day, an invader, a trespasser, he's got the ability to block us accessing these courts. It's totally wrong in anyone's sense of the law. Um, Look at the Genocide Convention and the definition. Australia is guilty of everything you find as what genocide is according to the 1948 Convention. Now I'll challenge any here to say other Have a look at the Act. They're guilty of everything written in it. And the fact that they haven't legislated uh, and made it a, a, an offence in this country is tantamount to committing the crime itself. They're failing to prevent. The whole spirit of the 1948 Act was the idea of preventing the act of genocide and punishing people. That never happened. There's no uh, deterrence from people committing in this country. That's the whole idea of preventing, preventing the act. Now, it's very clear that Australia has failed to prevent. We still have uh, issues of stolen generations. If you have a look at the stats, the issues are worse. Deaths in custody, creating the conditions of life, all of it, whole act, guilty of. So I'm challenging that this committee and Senate to uh, demonstrate otherwise. What part of the act we're not guilty of?
Well, when we initially tried to revoke that act, we were told that genocide was not considered to be an offence in this country. That was in 1997. Since that time, the International Court, the Rome Statute and the creation of the International Criminal Court of Justice have been established and Australia signed on in full. Where this fiat comes from, I fail to understand. I don't know if that's part of the negotiations, the immunity deal that Australia did with, with the courts. They've got a habit of doing that. They did it back in 1948. They've gone away with it. You know, I think it's 76 years now that genocide was identified back then. And nothing's happened. It's got worse. Have a look at the states now. You think there's a war going on. By the way, you know, when a fleet of military ships turn up in your territorial waters, it's an act of war and aggression. It started 250 years ago here. When did it end exactly? So there's an issue is, is there a war going on in this country? Is there a war? And when did it end? Exactly. Has there been a cease of hostility? How is it possible for these people to be sitting there in judgment of our people? We have a law here. White colonisers came here. They didn't bring law here. They brought terrorism and piracy. They're not a law. They're a falsehood. They need to be exposed at the international court. There's no way that we're going to get justice in this country. Now we need to do this. It's urgent. It's not just urgent for Aboriginal people. Australia's complicit with other genocides around the world. So it's urgent on many fronts. And the noose is tight. You, know, you may have got away with it for the last 76 years, but things have changed. So, and we're not going away. We're going to be here until we get justice for our ancestors, for our esteemed elders, our children, our children's children and our land. So you better deal. And what that statement said, you better consider what you're saying here. Because you are, you're complicit. You know, it's, that's why we need to have this at an international level. We can't have uh, an in-house arrangement here in terms of this genocide wars. That's why the whole idea is international universal jurisdiction should apply. Well, I think, uh, like I just said, the Attorney General has his fiat, and it's uh, basically preventing Aboriginal people or anybody else from accessing these courts. And I, I thought that uh, Australia was the only case, but it's, like you say, it's all these colonial countries around the world that have got this fiat. You know, it makes it very clear what's going on. So, you know. We need to get to a court of law. Australia is not a proper legal system here. It's a false word. It's a fake. How do you get war when you commit acts of genocide and steal? That's not a basis of law. Terranos is a, a legal fiction. So where do you actually get jurisdiction anyway to hear this? So to put these people in front of us, it's preventing us remedying this situation, stopping the genocide of our people. So they're clearly responsible. Mark Dreyfus is clearly responsible in terms of their legal system. He's the blocker here. And um, you know, we'll find a way around these fears and we'll expose this country to what it's, uh, what it's doing. And um, sooner or later, it may take another 20 years, but will we be still asking the same question? And the weight of evidence building against this country, it's, it's pretty disgraceful as it is. We want an opportunity in the International Criminal Court. Like, we're a law. Where's your law? White knight. Right? You're a joke. Innocent white knight. Right? You're a joke. And this, this whole place is premised on lies. Deceit. Fraud. Of course you're going to back it up with your fears and your way of avoiding Justice. Well, that's all it is. You should have a good hard look at yourself. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I, you know, I consider him one of the best lawyers. Not that he's a, not that he is a lawyer these days. He's a retired barrister, but he's got a, a history of human rights, defending human rights, not just here but elsewhere around the world. And I was um, fortunate enough to catch up to him, and um, we've been a team ever since. But you know, we're not a. That's all we are. It's just me and him. So it is impressive. Is there a, Fridays ago, it was probably uh, week ago, maybe. but um, I think um, we're, we're waiting for the ruling and, and we'll come down to the Supreme Court, but pretty confident that the magistrate heard when they, they said that the crime was not known, and they know for what. So, it'll be interesting what does come out of it. You know, genocide's a known crime these days, since 2000. And they got away with that before, back in the day, but not now. So they've obviously made a mistake there. They um, got that judicial review uncovered and plays that right. And, and, and you've argued your case in front of the, uh, the Supreme Court judge, the Victorian Supreme Court, is that correct? Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's right. And did she give you any indication as to the time in which you were going to make that decision? Not really, but you said you gave her a lot to think about. So, well, you know, we're, I think it's time for a change in this country. Um, <coughs> this, this law's caught, finally caught up to Australia. You know, their the last uh, refuge is this Fiat at the Attorney General. Once we get around that, you know, I think it opens it up. And, you know, talk about um, our claims being vexations and frivolous. Well, I'd, I'd ask any Aboriginal person in this country whether they reckon our claims are frivolous or vexatious. Any Aboriginal person. And uh, I think it's really offensive and insulting to say that to our people. So, um, you know, time's come on this. this and as you can see, what's going on around the rest of the world, things have been, um, there's been watershed moments recently on, in the genocide issue. So it's only a matter of time before the eyes of the world turn onto Australia and we cover the world history, which is one of uh, a total genocide from the get go. It's premeditated, it's intentional, it hasn't stopped. And the evidence is all there. Just look at the stats. And how we were a robust, healthy society not that long ago. You know, out the population of the people in Victoria was reducing from 100% of the population to about 0.1% of the population. Now, if that's not genocide, well, I don't know what we're talking about. I don't know why I'm here. But um, as far as I'm concerned, Australia's just one big legacy of shame. And, and if you look at your your whole foundation of your occupation here, terra nullis. What did the High Court say about that before they struck it out? They said it was the act of unutterable shame. When they removed terra nullis, where did the High Court actually get the, the jurisdiction? I still want to know how they worked that out. So there's lots of questions we need to ask, fundamental legal questions of international law. We're not going to see justice here while this status quo is here. And I hope that the Senate and this inquiry can do something about sorting this law out in a real way, a proper way. So we all, you know, we should be free from these crimes. You know, we, should, we should have access to the 